let's use the fundamental theorem of the curl on Faraday's law. So apply Stokes to Faraday's law. And maybe you were even thinking about it when we talked about Stokes' theorem, that it does seem to be relevant. So, you know, in the Faraday's law, we have a ring, say, of wire like that, and we have a B field going through the ring, and we decided it's when the B field changes, something changes in there, that we have an EMF going around. So let's remember, so let's remind ourselves there was the EMF was minus D phi B DT. Faraday's law of induction. But we have the integral form. We can think of both sides as an integral. Remember the EMF, we said, well, that means that there's an electromotive force. That was the old fashioned way to think about it. We know really what you have is an electric field pushing around. There's an electric field exists. It's a very weird non conservative electric field, but it is an electric field. So you say, instead of just writing it as the EMF, you can do an integral around the loop of this induced electric field, E dot DL, like that. So that's another way to write Faraday's law. And then we can also just turn this into an integral. This is B dot DA. So minus D DT times the integral of B dot DA, like that. All right. So now let's get stoked which I think is just a camping slang. I'm not sure where that comes from. And what we're going to do is say, well, from Stokes' law, we know that the integral uh, around this closed loop of e dot dl must be the same, equal to the integral of the surface. Basically, I can't even come close to spelling surface. The integral, if this closed uh, path went around a loop, then the surface is just inside that loop, right? Of that surface of del cross E dot DA. And that equals minus DDT uh, integral of B dot DA. And when you do that, suddenly you see you have the same thing inside the integral of the same area, right? We did. Uh, when we went from the, dot, uh, the E dot DL to del cross E, we're talking about a surface integral on this area of the loop. And the flux of the B field also applies to that same surface. And I guess I should have written it this way. I should stick the DDT inside the integral, just and the negative sign for that matter, minus D DT. And then you say everything inside the integral goes together, or is equal. Yeah. Yeah, right to there, yeah. So that's how we know the other version of Faraday's law then is del cross oops, is del cross E is minus D B D T. That is the differential form where this is the integral form. And we can sort of think of it intuitively a little bit. Again, the integral form is useful when you have sort of big freshman physics homework situations, big wire loops in a magnetic field. The field version is more useful sort of at a point. It's just basically saying anywhere, if you have a point where dBdt is changing, you don't have to think about necessarily a large area. Just at that point, the electric field will have the property of having curl. It will create a curled electric field, an electric field that wants to push something around in a circle. And of course, that's what it does. That's, it induces uh, this sort of non-conservative field that pushes things in a circle. So it does kind of match the intuition we were building up about curl is like twist. This thing is wants to twist. That's the kind of field that pushes something in a circle when you have a changing magnetic field. 